The crime, the original. Where it all started here Dickies. at Dickie's Barbecue. Hey, cheers not only for being back at Dickie's and you know the wonderful spread they give us, but cheers and a little, if you will, for your pick of Tennessee over South Carolina. Give me another was, cheers. I tell you what, I was that wondering. Was very impressed. I was wondering if you were going to acknowledge that was huge. I told you, but Butch Jones needed a win, and I just do not like the way they, uh, they that, that team plays sometimes. And I, you know, South Carolina all over the map, and I figured Tennessee. What do you say? Let's rock and roll. I mean, they blew a 14-point lead to the Cox. They deflated in the second half and, you know, got to overtime. Anything happens, yeah. I give it to you. A defense weakened, though, at the end. Uh, they couldn't stand tall against that tough offense. But before we get into more college, uh, man, there are some big games going down Friday night in Jones County. I have a feeling I'm going to one that's not big. Yeah, well, nah. uh, it, it's still big for it Wayne County big. as they come to the reservation and play South Jones, you know. You're going to be at the big if, one. If, if they win Wayne County, I don't know if we really throw if in there, but um, they're able to beat the Braves. They're in a position where they could win number one in the region. You know, I was out at uh, South Jones Laurel last week, and first time I'd ever seen Laurel, and I haven't seen many high school teams that athletically look as good as they do and have the athletes. They were open. The score could have been a lot worse. I give Coach Breland a lot of credit. They put in all the substitutes at the end. That is a tough team. When they're firing and when they're rolling, they're hard to beat. And obviously you saw that two weeks ago when they beat Wayne County. Of course, Wayne County, half of their their, uh, their mind will be up in uh, up in Sosa. You know, cause they're, Wondering what's going on. Most likely they're going to beat South. It's going to take a monumental effort for South Jones to compete with Wayne you know, for the long haul. Um, but I think Wayne is going to have one ear on Soso. And uh, I imagine, uh, what do they say, you might be in Soso. Might be, but before we uh, oh, we're not talk there? about Soso. Why do I have a problem with that, Guru? I always <laughs> jump ahead. I'm like the jump ahead guy. I'm the jump ahead guy. That's no real big deal. Northeast Jones, out in the jungle, in a little bit of a uh, rematch as they open their first round in the Class 4A playoffs and battle North Pike. Uh, Tigers came out on the short end. Uh, back in late September when they played at, at North Pike and Summit. They uh, scored late to take a 42-41 lead for the North Pike score with just seconds left on the clock and won that game 49-42. I got a feeling. I got a feeling. Uh, Coach Braddock is going to have those Tigers fired up and ready for a little revenge on Friday night. The biggest thing is going to be it's in the jungle. Magnolia is a long way to go. I think North Pike is a Magnolia. It's somewhere around Summit. It's a long way to drive. North is, northeast at home, playing really, really well. Um, nobody from the leader call was at that game at North Pike. We had three home games, if I'm not mistaken. So nobody got to go. But I remember watching Facebook and going Getting those back and forth. Back from and our forth, uh, good friend uh, in Northeast Jones graduate, Jonathan Eddy. Props. Shout out to Jonathan. Props to Jonathan. So you going Tigers? I'm going Tigers. I think that they're finding a, you know, they're finding a rhythm. Great picture you took on uh, tomorrow's page one of the leader call, or which will be Tuesday's day one. Uh, Justin Stewart really knocking the the uh, Kazuki out of that uh, Forest County quarterback. Huge play too. Led yeah, to led a, to a turnover. One of uh, three Northeast Jones interceptions. You know, the defense coming on strong for Coach Braddock here in recent weeks, and I think it's going to be enough. I don't think uh, North Pike is able to replicate the 49 points. I'd venture even to say that they don't get half as many this time around. I think that's a great pick. Uh, you were out at Northeast last week. Did they uh, mix it up good? They did uh, well. I think the key to them is when they can run and pass at the same time, you know, effectively throughout the game. Yeah, they were able to do that. Uh, I think it was kind of a balance. They passed right around 100 yards, rushed for close to 200. Uh, but I'm telling you, it was, it was Stewart and that defense, man, they were they were legit. I think they're going to take care of business again this week. I hope so. Keep it rolling. Now, it. now we can go to your game. Now, Mr. Skip Ahead. Now we can skip ahead. <laughs> so much is at stake here, this one. And basically, if we break it down easy, Laurel wins their number one. Laurel loses. They could fall as low as number, four, number four. Because of that inexplicable up. And they can probably go back 
and find that Pearl River game, yep. which was between the bricks, and smack themselves each in the helmet and say, what happened? But, they had no business losing to that team. But they can take care of that all on Friday night. All they have to do is go out and win. However, I don't think Mr. Uh, Neil McLaurin is going to be one to just let the Tornadoes walk mm -hmm. into uh, Mustang Stadium and, and bow down no. to the Tornadoes. And they, uh, West is going to be smarting from a really tough loss last week. And they're going to be ready to get back after it. Weather's going to be cold. The fans are going to be intense. It's going to be a great atmosphere. I remember you telling me about the atmosphere last year. One of the greatest games you've seen. The 35-34 overtime win for Laurel. And they just, uh, those two get after it. And now with this weather cool, man, the pads are popping and cracking. And it's, uh, it's And not only does it have playoff, huge playoff implications, but the winner will get the coveted leader call battle for the belt. I think half the local teams would give up a trip to the playoffs if they could win the leader call battle for the belt. I agree. Kids were really into it last year. I tell you, though, I would not be surprised one bit if we see a similar end to the game like we did last year, you know, a close game where it gets pushed to overtime. I'm looking forward to a, another exciting game. I mean, I, I think you kind of uh, – you can't really take into consideration what each team did against Wayne County because, you know, for one law, got to play Wayne County between the bricks. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side, Wes Jones had to travel to Waynesboro. So, I mean, I think it's – I really think it's going to be a, another close game. I'm not going to pick it. You have to wait till Thursday uh, to get my pick on I tell you this. The Twitterverse, the Facebook universe is going to be going crazy because also Friday night, Old Brook plays at Pearl River Central. So local fans are going to be rooting for Old Brook. How many times do you think I get asked on the sideline if I know a Brookhaven uh, Pearl River Central? You sport? will a lot this week. <laughs> Wayne is going to be asking, they'll ask me if I know a Brookhaven. There's so many important games and with playoff implications. That it's going to be a fun Friday night. It should be a great Friday night. You know, good luck to uh, all our area teams. Look forward to Presenting the belt to perhaps maybe a new champion. Wow. Is that a little prelude? Maybe. Maybe. Tell you what, I like both those programs. It's going to be a good one. Ought to be a great one. Moving along to uh, college football, Murph. <laughs> In the state of Mississippi, the big three, I mean, come on. I mean, look, this is what I got for Ole Miss and oh. Mississippi State. That's how much we're going to talk about their games this week. <laughs> Forget Cupcakes. about it. Forget Cupcakes. About it. Presbyterian UT Martin. Forget, we ain't going any further. I'm telling you this, a much uh, higher quality cupcake than the earlier cupcakes That's a lot you higher had quality in September. Than that. I, didn't I won't, those. That was a honey badger that brought that. I won't even throw those around the building here. And for Southern Miss. Oh, no. For Southern Miss. What? They will get hammered Easy at home going. against Easy. Marshall. You got the cupcakes for the big two, the hammer for the little one. I don't have anything else to say unless you want to talk about the big three. I was disappointed my Golden Eagles didn't. I thought they were going to beat UTEP. Get back to the uh, old Eagles of earlier this year. Eh, let's move on. But outside of the Magnolia State, huge, huge weekend. Not just for the SEC like it has been in recent weeks, but for the entire country. You didn't tell me there was six top 25 six matchups. top 20 matchups. Top 20 matchups. Six. Man, I'm going to have to get some uh, some cool uh, soda and uh, some other beverages and plan to sit at home all day. Fire up the grill. Fire I'll up the you, grill. Before we get into such, we're into all these really big team matchups, let's go ahead and give out our uh, Dickies upset picks of the week. Uh, where, yes, the man to my left is on a five-game winning streak. I'll I'm give him the props. The five-game winning streak. And this one's going to go out to my mother who's a wonderful woman, lives in Asheville, North Carolina, and they had a player for the Asheville Taurus single-A baseball team, played shortstop. His name was Russell Wilson. Oh, da-da, da-da, Wilson. So she loves Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson played ball where? North Carolina State. North Carolina State over Georgia Tech for my mother, whose birthday is Wednesday. So it'll be a happy Russell birthday, Wilson, Mama Guru. happy birthday, North Carolina State upset at Georgia Tech. And listen, five in a row. And these aren't easy upsets. No. Tennessee? Oh, so nobody's picked Tennessee to win in 15 years. Especially not on the road. T. Martin was quarterback in the last time Tennessee was a favorite. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Forget about it. Before I give you mine, just like shout out James Bynum. Thank you for continuing to play the leader call uh, football pick'em contest. 
I don't see uh, any way that Texas <coughs> was going on the planes and knocking off Auburn. I don't know James Bynum. I'm not too familiar with Sosa. Do they have some kind of something? They meant some funny smell or something out there? <laughs> because yeah, there's, chicken houses. Uh, hey, obviously there's some chicken houses because there's no way on the green earth that Texas A&M, oh, we've got more rolls it looks like. Texas A&M is going to beat Auburn. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you playing. But I'm going to question your sanity on this one. And for my upset, Murph, I'm going to go a little, uh, little north where up in Big Ten country. Up in Minnesota. You're going Canada. We're in Minnesota. The Golden Gophers, who like the Golden Tornadoes, same school color, same school fight song. Gophers over Iowa to oh. win the Floyd of Rosedale bronze oh, pig. Oh, no, 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 no. Go no, no. no, I, no Iowa. Iowa going to win, yeah. <laughs> Iowa going to win. No, 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 Minnesota. No, oh, no, no, no. I like that pick, though. All right, here we go. Five big ones in college football. I say the five because the last one is going to be the wrap-up of the show. Baylor at Oklahoma. Who are you taking? I caught him mid-bite, so we'll give him a second to catch up. I Maybe love, even we'll have a little drink. I love Baylor's offense. Don't care for their defense. Don't like Bob Stoops. Games at Oklahoma. Flipping a coin. It's coming up schooners. I flipped a coin. A schooner came out. Oklahoma. Fair enough. But they won't cover. Ooh, that's going to be a close one then. Four and a half Ooh. points they don't cover. I like the Bears. Road upset. And I'm going to move on. Oregon, the high-flying Ducks at Utah. Watched a little bit of uh, Utah's game last week. I love how they do things defensively. I just don't know. Coming off a big game last week, I mean, that, the Ducks are tough. The Ducks are tough. The SEC door is open because they see people are going to start beating each other up the rest of the way down the stretch. They got a chance. I mean, Oregon's right got in the a top chance. four and get into the playoffs. Our producer, let's get, let's give it to him. Yeah. And Calvin we'll give Smith. it to him next week if he gets it right. Kelvin, he's going Utah. He's going Utah. It. You might have heard of Utes in the background, but me and Murph here, we're going to go with the Ducks. We're going to go with the Ducks, but I think it. Uh, I don't think it'll be a blow. I don't think it'll be a good game. I don't think it'll be a good game. I think. Uh, Oregon might score late to make it a 10, 13 point game. The rematch of last year's Big Ten uh, championship game, Ohio State going on the road at Michigan State. Who are you like in that one? I think Urban Meyer is a crook. Michigan State all the way. I don't have a pencil, and I've already got in trouble when I get too close with you with a knife. Oh, that was a real steak knife, though. <laughs> Went for the juggler. Went for the juggler. This me? is a shout out to uh, my buddy who's still uh, active duty in the Navy, Kevin Neal. Kevin, OH, and I know your response. Go Buckeyes, road upset, Ohio State over Michigan State. Tell your buddy I appreciate uh, being able to get one game closer <laughs> to you on the standings too. Oh, one of your favorite schools, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, <laughs> on the road, all the way down to uh, Tempe to take on Arizona State. My high school is the Red Devils. They're the Sun Devils. What the heck? Arizona State. I don't like Notre Dame. I think they get I ranked. Know you don't. I think they get ranked Off high the because of the rain recognition. It's a very difficult place to play down there in Tempe. Absolutely. So I don't think Notre Dame is going to win. I think Arizona State. And I think if you're a Sun Devil and you look at that and they say you're at home, but we only this how much faith in you. We're making you a two-point favorite. The books always give you three to three and a half points just for being the home team. Yeah. So they really don't even you know really give much respect to Arizona State. And a lot of people don't know a lot about Arizona State because there aren't that many idiots in Laurel Jones County who stay up till 2 o'clock in the morning watching the late games on and continue to text message each other at 2 o'clock in the morning for Fresno State, Wyoming after watching football for 15 hours. I don't know who it would be referring to. I don't know to. who either. I know there's a lot of spelling mistakes in those text messages though. Late on a Saturday night. Damn, autocorrect. Yeah, it's just like Tiger Stadium at my house. i tell you that right now. A circus. It is I'm gonna a circus. I'm going to go Arizona State right along with you. I've watched them a couple times this year. Like their defense. And uh, with it being at home and a big road trip for the Irish, I think uh, Arizona State wins a close one. Huge uh, matchup for uh, the Big 12. I mean, this, this could be one of our four playoff teams. Whoever can come out ahead in this game, I think. Each Kansas State and TCU each have, I think, two or three games left. Um, Horn Frogs, what a win over West Virginia uh, last week. 
Hey, you put West Virginia, West Virginia at home reminds me of Arkansas at home a lot. They're just crazy things happen. Though West Virginia was going to win, I really like TCU. I like their uniforms. I've liked Gary Patterson as a coach for a long time. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the thing with the frogs. frogs and quality, quality team. I'm predicting they will be one of the four in the playoffs. Uh, they don't have the great name recognition, the pedigree of some team. People say TCU and TCU and Texas Christian University. But I think they're too strong at home over Kansas, Kansas State. And with you mentioned that, Kansas State is a team that, you know, 10, 12 years ago actually got on the national map when Bill Snyder um, won the Big 12 championship and got them, out to, I believe it was to the uh, Fiesta Bowl. Got them into a BCS Bowl. So there, there's more people out there probably, especially here in Jones County, that have heard about Kansas State more so than a TCU. But I'm with you. I, I like uh, the Horned Frogs, Coach Patterson. It's a home game. It's going to be huge. It's a, if you've never watched a TCU home game, they have a big atmosphere. It's a lot of fun that they have there in Fort Worth. And I like the Frogs. Uh, I'm going to go 24-17 TCU. I like that pick, too. I like it. Well, for those that don't know, as you can see by my LSU, forgive the guy. He was traveling back from a, a elongated weekend. I left early this he morning. He left early this morning. He didn't get to wear his Alabama shirt, but he has them in his heart. And this is kind of where we have a separation this week. Just a little. It's Alabama. It's LSU. It may not be quite as big as it has in some years. I started watching, uh, my brother went to Alabama when uh, Mike Shula was coach. Uh, he was there for the Mike Price debacle. Uh, Fran, remember Coach Francione where, oh, Alabama football, it's fantastic, you say, it's fantastic. And it was awful. Best part was I'd go visit Dan, we'd get in the stadium for $2 and watch the game. Worst part, they stunk. All right? But now Alabama's good. But I have a reason to root for them. I'm not some kind of bandwagon just jumps on them, you know, when they got good. Hey, the first know. game I went to in Tiger Stadium, uh, Curly Holman was the head coach of LSU. Speaking of Curly Holman, you know, I watched Curly's last stand, which was almost as bad as Custer when Southern Miss uh, kicked a field goal in 1995. You had to bring that up. <laughs> had to bring that up. Just stir it a little bit. Stir you know, it a little Being from New York, I thought I knew all the four-letter words. But after that game, I learned some with Cajun <laughs> accents that I, oh, man. I'm gl I hope, I don't know how many police Curly had to get the hell out of that. So let me there. ask you, did your opinion of this game change just a little bit a couple of weeks ago when LSU was able to take care of Ole Miss at home? Yes. I mean, I, I'm just guessing. Alabama, Were you going into the when LSU that? After LSU lost the state and got absolutely man Mollywopped. Obliterated. I like obliterated by Auburn. Auburn. I said, okay, well, you were probably right. Young team, give them a year or two, they'll be back. But they're, I like that offensive line. And I said, when you get that offensive line, you start laying on people and you run the football. Alabama better be ready. Tiger Stadium, they play well at Tiger Stadium. I can't pick 10 weeks out of the year, 11 weeks, bowl game. I pick LSU. Fair enough. But you're dead to me this week as far as I'm concerned. Fair it was a very somber uh, greeting this morning when I got to the office. Um, not a lot of chatter. Probably won't be until this time next week. And one of us is going to be gloating. And the other one might not be so And why don't you tell the camera what happened after last year's game? Yeah, last year's smash year. Okay. I want to know who you're picking. All right. I got Alabama. There's going to be some mixed extra points. There will be at least one safety. I'm going to pick 26, 20, 20. 26-20. That's from a few years ago, overtime game. That's you the know, nerd that he is, Mr. Statbook <laughs> himself. I was told by somebody uh, recently while out covering a golf tournament, we were talking about this game. And uh, he said, well, I don't even have to read the paper or, or watch Feasting on Football to know who you're going to pick because you're an LSU fan. And you always pick LSU. So Murph? No way. You know, there comes a time. Uh oh that you just have to succumb. <laughs> I mean, LSU's good. Alabama might be even better. Elizabeth, <laughs> I'm coming to see you. I think it's going to be a this close game. This is the big game. one. This and is the I, big one. And this is like a two-part prediction. I think they're going to go to overtime. Tied at 13. Alabama's going to be held and they kick a field goal. So you got a 16-13 game. And then LSU has the ball. And what happens? They score the touchdown and the Tigers upset the oh! Tigers! Oh, go Tigers! Move! Go Tigers! Roll! Go Tigers! Roll! Thank you for tuning in this week.
week's episode. Thank Thanks, you, Dickie's Quick Barbecue. Thank you, Dickie's Barbecue. We'll see you next Monday. This place is insane. I'm the guru. Go Why Tigers. They, they keep inviting see us ya. back. This is out of control. What are they doing? Roll Tide. Peace. Go Tigers, be